Now I'm going to show you some data that I collected from other people. So um, I, I have to tell you about something called the Great Group, which is uh, a part of the uh, AAMC, the Association of American Medical Colleges. Within that, there is a subgroup called the Great Group, which is basically um, PhD program directors and associate deans and people like that who oversee PhD training programs within medical schools across the country. Okay, so that's a very big, it's a very big group. And um, I'm a member of that group. And within the great group, we poll each other all the time to basically take the, our, the temperature across the country on, on various issues. So very recently, like within the last week, I polled that group um, on their uh, opinions and policies on the use of the GRE because I didn't really have a very strong sense of thinking about the GRE within PhD programs across the country. So I'm gonna, uh, I'll try to go quickly because um, I don't want to take too much time, but I, I, I thought these were interesting and perhaps relevant to this discussion, so I'll, I will um, show you some of the, I think, the most important results. So the first question was, does your PhD program require applicants to provide GRE general test scores? Almost everybody said yes. That's not too surprising. Um, I'm aware of at least two programs across the country that I know for sure don't require the GRE, and they're both fairly new PhD programs. One is at Cold Spring Harbor Labs, the Watson School, and the other is the Stowers Institute. Um, if there are others that you know of for sure that don't require the GRE, and I think those two programs never have required the GRE. Um, if you know of others, please, please let me know. Does your program require a GRE subject test? This has changed over time. Um, uh, very few programs now require a subject test. Within PIBs, um, uh, the subject test requirement was dropped back in, I believe, 2010. Does your program use a GRE score cutoff? Um, and the results were kind of half and half. Uh, half. Roughly half say they do, and roughly half say they don't. So for this yellow category right there are umbrella programs in which different programs have different requirements. Have concerns about the use of GRE scores and PhD admissions been discussed at your institution? Yes, everybody's talking about this. And you're not supposed to read this, but I will be posting the, the results. I left an open text field after this saying any comments, and there's some really interesting and revealing comments in here. One thing that I thought was particularly interesting was that several programs pointed out that they'd like to discuss dropping the GRE requirement but they can't because um, either the, gra the graduate school, the equivalent of our RACM at their institution, forces all PhD programs to require the GRE, which um, I should say at, at U of M, RACM dropped that requirement several years back when um, Janet Weiss was RACM dean. Um, or uh, several programs said they'd like to discuss dropping or changing the GRE requirements, but they can't because NIH training grants require GRE data for applicants. And um, in case any of you have that same opinion, let me point out that that's not true any, anymore. Um, for NIH training grants, for NIH individual fellowships, and for NSF individual fellowships, um, the GRE data requirement has been dropped. So those barriers are gone. Another good reason why this is maybe a good time to at least discuss this. Okay, are there concrete plans to either change your program's GRE requirements or bring the question to a head in the near future? Um, about 20% yes, the rest no. In your opinion, this is the big one, in your opinion, for these PhD program leaders, in your opinion, should GRE general test scores be required for biomedical PhD admissions? I was pretty surprised to see that it's, it's about half and half. 22 said yes, 21 said no. And this poll is still open, so we'll get more data as it goes on, but this is the, the, last, I, the last I've seen of it. So it's about half and half. Now for those who said yes, I then asked follow-up questions. And if you said, they said no, then I asked them different follow-up questions, okay? So for those who said um, yes, GRE should be required, those 22 uh, PhD program leaders, I then asked why, and I gave them a series of options to check, and they could check as many as they wanted, okay? So uh, these are some reasons I have heard for using the GRE, right? And then I gave an other category. 
Um, the first reason, valuable as a predictor of success in graduate school, nobody chose that. Provides an objective, standardized measure of ability, 10 out of 22 selected that. But one said measures abilities that are relevant for PhD trainees. Um, the biggest category was useful for screening out students below a certain level of ability. Uh, two said a reliable, two out of 22 said a uh, reliable indicator of quantitative skills. And seven said other. So if you said other, you got a text box, which you could fill in. And these are those seven responses. I will let you look at them. Actually, I'll read them to you because otherwise I'll be bored up here. They are beneficial if used with other indicators. Keep open the option that a better test might be devised. It is a standardized, though not always reliable, indicator of quantitative skills. It affords the program an opportunity to see if a student may need help with buttressing quantitative skills. However, it should not be an admissions criterion, and there should be no arbitrary cutoff. It indicates the applicant is serious. It can be useful for identifying exceptional students. It is a useful part of a holistic approach to admissions, and it shows that the student has made some effort to apply beyond completing the application. So those are the reasons that I got why the GRE should be kept as a requirement for, for PhD admissions. Okay, so now for those who said no, it should not be required, they had these options to choose from. Of those 21 who said no, uh, the GRE is a poor or reliable predictor of success in graduate school. 100% of those 21 said yes. Concerned is about bias against underrepresented groups of applicants. 90% uh, of those said yes. Concerns about cost and equal access to testing facilities and test prep, uh, two-thirds said yes. Does not measure abilities that are relevant, 13 out of 21 said yes. And other, there was one person who said other, and that other was scares away some applicants. Okay, so those are the reasons out there for or against. If you said no, then I asked you, well, if the GRE should not be required, should it be accepted and the scores shared with admissions committees if the applicant chooses to submit them. And of those 21, um, about, I think, just, what is that, 62% said yes, they should be accepted but not required, okay? All right, so those are the data I have on um, peers across the country. Now I wanna show some data on, uh, from trainees. So this is a study much like the studies that you've already read, um, but this one happens to be unpublished. Um, a colleague, Nancy Street, an associate dean at UT Southwestern Medical Center, um, heard about this discussion that we're having, and she sent me some data from a, 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 an as yet unpublished study that I thought I would uh, share with you. I thought it was interesting and relevant. <clears throat> so thank you, Nancy, for sharing the, these data. So they looked at, uh, in this study, they looked at 183 PhD uh, students over a several year period. Um, and the metric of success, which is always a tricky thing to uh, determine, and it's always a, a source of criticism for these studies. How do you measure, if you're going to correlate any, any, any score on a test with success, how do you measure success, right? It's not easy. What they did here, which is similar to what's been done in other studies in the past, is um, they asked, uh, at the time of the student's thesis defense, they asked their dissertation committee to rank them on a scale of, of one to five, I believe, of, of success, right? So this kind of fudges the question because it leaves up to the faculty member how do they define success, right? I will say that somehow they managed to get the faculty to use the whole range, as you'll see, and I believe that the median score was 2.5 in this data set, so uh, that was surprising to me, but they seem to have, for, what it, for this kind of data, what looked like fairly decent data. So on the y-axis here, we have those post-graduation ranking marks for those 183 students. On the x-axis, we have several different GRE measures. The first is the GRE verbal score, and this is what the data looked like. I don't know what you would guess the correlation here is, but it's, uh, it is uh, 0.05. Does everybody here know about coefficient of correlation? I'm not, a, I'm not a big stats guy, but this is a metric that measures basically how linear a relationship between two, two uh, sets of variables are. So if they fall on a straight line with a positive slope, that is an R of one. 
if they fall on a straight line with a negative slope, that's an R of negative one, and if there's no correlation, it's uh, an R of zero, okay? So this would be considered a, I believe, sorry? This is the scores that the members of the students' dissertation committees gave the student after their graduation. And I don't know, I, don't, I haven't seen a written study here, so I don't know exactly how they were asked, but they were basically, you know, rank this student on a scale of one to five. So uh, that is definitely a caveat to these kinds of studies, right? Because that is a subjective measure, no question. If you look at the quantitative GREs, um, you can see that they have uh, uh, very few students uh, below a certain GRE score. This is the old style GRE measurement that went from 200 to 800, right? Um, and I, let me point out, this is a program that says they don't use cutoffs, but uh, I'm, I'm, not so, I'm not so sure about that looking at these quantitative data. But in, in any case, um, there is a, uh, I, I wouldn't make too much of the negative slope here because 0.22 is still a pretty low number. But let's just say there's not a strong positive correlation in this data set. If you add the, so they also looked at adding those two scores together, you know, and um, in case students compensate with a low score here and a high score, uh, you know, low in the verbal, high in the quantitative, um, adding them to the, together doesn't, doesn't seem to make much of a difference. And then finally, um, they, don't ha they didn't have a ton of students who took a subject test, but they also looked at that, and those students who took a subject test, um, they didn't find a correlation. Um, so uh, that's what I have, and just, just throw that on the pile with all the other studies that you've read up to, up to this point. 